Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and welcome back, Julie Harris. Thank you, you as well. And we're going to do some exciting scripting today. These are four success scripts that everyone listening, whether you are brand new or a grizzled veteran, every single listener does need in today's changing market. And these are things that you're going to hear constantly. And so here's the challenge all of us have. You're out and about and you're talking with people about real estate, or at least you should be. And a lot of people, most people, 99% of everyone, their heads are being filled with a lot of conflicting information about real estate, and they don't know which way is up. They don't know whether it's a great time to buy, a great time to sell. They're just completely confused. And chances are you are confused and or you don't know how to deal with their confusion when wanting to talk uh, about real estate with them. So on today's show, we are going to give you starting out with four rules, and then we're going to give you some sample scripts of things you should consider saying when confronted with, you know, again, the general population of humans out there that are trying to rationalize buying or selling real estate. And it is important to remember, guys, there are still going to be between four and five million real estate transactions this year through the MLS. That does not necessarily include all of the transactions. And based on Julie and I's research, there could be as many as at least another a million transactions that happen, quote unquote, off market. And that includes new construction, never hits the MLS. So keep all these things in mind. There's not really a lack of definitely fewer homes for sale. There's no question about that. But really what there is, there's a lack of the skills necessary to make folks feel comfortable to move forward and transact because of this market. Because there's an excellent chance, guys, that all the home buyers and frankly, the sellers that then become buyers 12 months from now will be a in a vastly superior position than those who procrastinated and thought, well, they'll just wait to time the market. That's absolutely right. And we know with the confusion in the market amongst people that you're talking with, And also yourselves, usually when people are confused listeners, that means that you tend to not talk about real estate because you're confused yourself. So we're going to help you with that. Why? Because here's the thing. The more you talk about real estate, the more with confidence and competence, the more deals you're going to create organically. So stop buying the business and paying huge referral fees. Generate business by yourself for free by being better at your scripts, better at your conversations. So let's start with the four rules of talking about real estate. Rule number one, always be positive. There are transactions happening every day all around you. People are moving for good reasons. So always be positive, even if you just had a bad day in real estate. It's also worth giving us a little, you know, side note to that point. Always be positive. Here's one that a lot of us fall into um, a bad habit of gossiping or gossiping on a sort of a lighter level, like so-and-so's house is for sale because they're getting a divorce. Be, don't be the person that is any sort of gossip uh, monger or purveyor of gossip. If you are turned on by the very words of, have you heard, does that sort of excite you when I say that? Hey, Bob, have you heard? If that's you, that means you're probably addicted to gossip and all of us to a certain extent are. By the way, all of us are sort of uh, preordained to want to hear gossip because it's a way to avoid problems in our own lives. If you know, for example, there's, you know, the gossip is that so-and-so is going to have this problem or whatever. Well, then maybe you want to avoid that problem or not develop that Human problem. nature. Exactly. So there is a, I think, a, a survival mechanism that kicks in place where people want gossip. But professionally speaking, don't gossip. Don't have and have the reputation of being a non-gossiper and even tell people that you never gossip. Actually say that. And if you are a gossiper now, stop doing it because what you're actually doing, even if you have people around you that want to hear what you have to say, want to hear the gossip, you know, you're not going, you're being cast in a way that's not going to bring more business to you. So it leans into Julie's first rule, which is always be positive and be very clear that any form of gossip is definitely not being positive. Yes. And quite possibly against your code of ethics and a whole bunch of other stuff you don't want to deal with. So if you, you know, just don't do it, that's, that's the basic filter, right? So point number two, or rule number two, concentrate on who you are talking to. Make it all about them, not all about you. That kind of plays into the gossip rule too. Okay. Rule number three, your mindset is always about how you can be of service. Be a problem solver. 
Rule number four, remember that people move because of their circumstances, not because of market conditions. There are always opportunities to help people buy or sell real estate, regardless of what type of market it is or what the interest rates are. So when we're on a coaching call with one of our higher level elite coaching clients, one of the first questions we'll ask them, not on every call, but most of them, we'll ask them, you know, what are the what are their best leads that they're working with now? People that they're ideally sellers that they're chasing. And then we always then we'll drill down on what that seller's motivation is. Sellers are very easy to discern whether or not they're actually motivated because sellers have to, the good sellers have to sell. Yes. And so the good sellers that have to sell are the ones that are going through life-changing events, usually out of their control. That is a have to sell seller. Whereas, mm-hmm. and we've talked endlessly on this podcast about the fact that really at the end of the day, there's no such thing as a buyer that has to buy because a buyer can just stay, they, they can just you know revert back to their present living situation, stay renting, stay in their current home, stay living in mom's basement with the rest of it. But with sellers, there are actually real reasons why a seller has to sell. So when you're when you're dealing with a seller, it's really important that you do understand that it's oftentimes the list the listings that actually will list with you and transact are the ones that have to sell. Though you might get occasionally, especially in this market, you might get occasionally a seller that's looking, for, you know, it's essentially looking for a aspirational pricing. And if they can get their price, then they'll sell the house. And some markets, guys, take every listing you can get, frankly, because, you know, in some markets where there's huge lack of inventory, even an overpriced listing will sell. You're experiencing that with some of your clients. Yeah, absolutely. But really, at the end of the day, just remember, people are always going to sell no matter happen- what happens to the market. And what do I mean by that? The sellers that have to sell will always be the ones that transact. Julie and I were just listening to a podcast on Friday, I think, mm-hmm. with Logan. Motoshami. And he was talking about the very fact that when you read all these people that are talking about M1 monetary supply and mm-hmm. M2 and interest rates and all the rest of it, what they're not taking in consideration is the fact that sellers, there will always be people that have to transact no matter what, no matter what who the president is, no matter what the interest rates are, no matter what direction the political winds are, all the rest of that stuff does not override the fact there'll always be people that have to transact. That's right. So don't you be the one who goes all into that conversation and brings up all of those things because it might be 100% irrelevant to some of your listing leads. But really where that goes back to is know how to pre-qualify and ask questions so you can get at the root of why that seller is selling. That's really the bottom line with with rule number four. That's right. So let's get on to four common questions and how to answer them. Question number one, how's the market? Okay, we're going to start with what not to say, then we'll talk about what you should say. How's the market? Do not say, well, it's gotten slower ever since rates got so high. Remember, they might not care about that. Do not say, my last closing was a real nightmare. You won't believe what happened. Realtors love to talk about their closing drama. They do. The person you're talking to doesn't want to hear that. They don't care. They do not care. And they are going to just slowly back out of that conversation. So Julie, go back to your first thing about rates. And so why do, why does, Interest rates obviously have a bearing on the housing market for sure. Yes. But I have a question for all of you, dear listeners. If there were, uh, if there were more inv- more homes for sale, even with interest rates where they are right now, would those homes still sell? And every single market, with maybe a few exceptions around the country, every single listing put for sale, despite the fact that interest rates now are tickling seven percent again, the houses are definitely going to sell. It, because there's a huge lack of inventory in the marketplace right now. By over a million. When you say huge, let's define that, right? So when there was an actual housing crash, not a made up one, when an actual housing crash happened and we had short sales and foreclosures and there were tons and tons of listings, there were 4 million active listings. Okay. And we still had high volume of sales. Now, a normal or balanced market, most economists, NAR, people say about 2 million, maybe two and a half. Right now, we're under a million. So we are somewhere between a million and a million and a half active listings from a balanced market. That's not even getting close to a buyer's market. The people that are getting hurt, the buyers in this marketplace that are getting hurt are definitely the first time buyers, but pretty much across the board, when you're looking, when you're talking with someone who's wanting to move up to a more expensive home, chances are they have a home to sell if they hadn't already Mm -hmm. sold it. So they're walking in a lot of cases, walking into their next home with a mountain of equity. They can buy the interest rates down. Builders are buying interest rates down. That's the thing uh, that people don't take into consideration is the fact the interest rates uh, can be bought down, but really you're dealing with a lot of cash buyers or you're dealing with a lot of people that are putting enough money down that they're not experiencing payment shock from higher interest rates, unlike a first-time buyer. Or so, they can use some of that equity to buy down the rate if that's important to them. Or your new construction and that's already baked in. You're buying new construction. You're also getting the builders uh, you know, lower interest rate because they bought the mortgage down. So this is the thing that's really kind of interesting. It's very dissimilar 
to a similar rising interest rate mark, uh, you know, his, historical periods. If we go back to like the 70s and the 80s, like mm-hmm. there was not monstrous home equity like there is now, nor was there huge demographic demand like there is now. So, yeah, history does sort of mirror, um, you know, what's happening now, but it's definitely not the same thing, not even close. Well, that's absolutely right. And don't forget a lot of the downsizing baby boomers, which we hear a ton of those transactions right now, they're paying cash for their next house. So don't get into an interest rate conversation if it's irrelevant. And do not say, please do not say this. I'm waiting for the market to crash like everyone else. You're going to be waiting a really damn long time. And I'll go, I'll go as far as to say, if you're hearing somebody saying they're waiting for the market to crash, or if you're hearing someone say they're waiting for rates to drop, or if you're hearing someone say all these other things, and that's a buyer. That's not a real buyer. Nope. They're they're just not serious. A serious again. Think about this, guys. Hopefully, all of you have been blessed with truly remarkably motivated sellers because those are the sellers that are selling right now who are also most in most cases become buyers. They don't say stuff like that. <laughs> no, they don't. They certainly don't lead with that. Think about your quote. I do this with coaching clients all the time when they have a situation where they're like. This person's not calling me back. They said they were motivated. I've got a house to show them. Well, okay, so does a real buyer who actually buys act like that, talk like that? No. Somebody who's actually going to transact with you is leading with, show me this house which meets my criteria in my price range. I want to see it today. Well, even if they don't say it that clearly, you're going to understand what their motivation is because you've used our pre-qualification scripts that are included with Premier Coaching. And yes, right now you can join Premier Coaching for free. The link to join Premier Coaching is, you know, scroll down. You'll see it in the show description. doesn't matter if you're listening to us on a podcast, which frankly most of you do, or you're listening to us over on uh, YouTube. Just go ahead and scroll down and click on the link to join Premier Coaching for free, or just go to premiercoaching.com. And yes, that does include a daily semi-private coaching call. And you can join Premier Coaching right now for free, have instant access to all of the first level And again, have instant access to live coaching every single day by her certified coach. That's right. So back to how's the market. We talked about three things not to say. What should you say? Answer with the market is changing, but it's great. I've been really blessed to help so many people over the last year. Assuming assuming that's true, or you can edit that by saying, I've been really blessed to be uh, in the position to help so many people going forward this year. You guys get it. Don't lie, obviously. Tell the truth. Uh, but the, the point is, to Julie's first rule, be positive. Don't be negative. They're already going to be coming to a conversation with you about real estate with their mindful of negative crap. <laughs> Take it in consideration. You don't have to be the exact opposite of what they're already thinking. Uh, you can you know, acknowledge what they're thinking, but don't, don't get mired in the misinformation that's out there with regards to housing because, again, between 4 and 5 million transactions at least will happen this year. And that includes – that's – Remember, a transaction, as I'm referring it to, between four and five million homes will sell at least. And there's two commissions, generally speaking, for each of those sales. That's a lot of agents that are going to get paid. Make sure it's you. Exactly. So be super positive. I'm so glad you asked. I've set a goal of helping three more families, or you might say three more folks or three more people, however you speak. But I need to help three more people buy or sell real estate this month. Whom do you know who could use my help buying or selling real estate? And then be quiet. And listen to their answer. Remember, you're not saying, do you know anyone? Because that could be a quick no, they didn't think about it. You're saying, whom do you know who could use my help? You might ask, what are you most curious about? Are you thinking about investing? You know, help them think about it. But now we're really getting into a conversation. So that, you know, again, how's the market? That's a normal question. Once they know you're in real estate, they're going to be asking you all the time. The market is great. By the way, who do you know? Or more specifically, who are the two or three people that you can think of right now that are thinking about selling their homes that I should be helping in this market. You guys get that? And then listen and let them think. Right. And what most of you are going to do is you're going to, you know, essentially prune what I just said and make it less effective because you think it's too direct. It's not. And you're going to discover that a lot of times, you know, how many people do you know right now that you're going to cross today know of someone who's thinking about selling their homes? I bet you if you meet, you know, run across, say, 10 people today, at least three to five of them are going to have, if you ask somebody uh, that they can possibly suggest you call or they'll have, you know, essentially pass your information along to that other person. You guys get it? Absolutely. All right. Now, question number two is a little bit for newbies, but it might apply to some of you returning to real estate as well. How long have you been in real estate? Now, note, the more professional you are, the less likely you're going to even get this question. Well, let's make sure they're clear about that. So listen to what Julie's about to read you guys. Okay. So again, the more professional you are from the get-go, you're less likely to even get that question. So dress well, 
learn your scripts, that's what Premier Coaching is for, and know what's actually happening in the market versus just the headlines. Knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear, so have some actual talking points. But back to the question, how long have you been in real estate? Do not say, well, I just got my license last month, or I just won the Platinum Award, or I've sold more homes than anybody in my office. No, here's a simple answer, no matter where you are, whether you just got your license or it's been a while. Go okay, ahead. now we don't want you to, again, do not lie. No. Do not move away from the fact if you just got your license. Now there's, again, Julie's, here's the, here's the script and we're gonna give you some variations of it. Seems like forever, it's been such a fast and furious market uh, lately. In fact, I've set a goal of helping you know five more people this month. Who do you know who's thinking about buying or selling real estate that I should be helping in this market? You got off the question, basically. Right. You Now, they don't really, honestly, guys, they don't really care how long you've been in real estate. Most times, they're just asking a question, and they're not even hearing their mouths you know, say the words that are coming out of their mouths, and let alone listening to what you have to say. Sometimes, if you've been, some of you are coming to the real estate industry, again, Julie's catering this to the new agents, that particular point. Yes. Uh, make sure that you give yourself credit for the fact that maybe you were doing some real estate investing prior to having a real estate license. Or maybe you had a real estate, you're coming from a real estate family. Or maybe you bought your you know, first home 10 years ago or whatever. You could say, well, I've been in real estate for in this market. I bought my first home 10 years ago or something like that. They're not really interested. Here's the thing that's hard for folks to understand. They are mostly, 99% of the time, people are thinking about themselves, not anyone else. So when you, it, it just be introspective about this. And it's not a criticism about, you know, our fellow humans. No. It's just a reality. Most cases we're thinking about, are we tired? Are we hungry? Are we anxious? Are we this? Are we the other thing? That's how everyone naturally is, uh, you know, essentially existing on this planet, being totally inwardly focused, right? So when they're asking you a question, most of the time, they're not asking you for the sake of learning. They're just asking you to be conversational. So if you are able to answer the question quickly and to the point and then revert back to asking them a question that's going to help, that's going to be focused on what they're interested in, which is their goals, what they're interested in doing real estate wise, or just frankly, the weather, that's going to be how you should handle any sort of complicated question. The worst thing you can do is talk too much about yourself. And it's one of the first things Julie said today. Remember, the people that make the biggest impact on other people are the ones that show the most sincere caring um, in, in caring for other people by asking competent professional type questions and having a competent professional uh, approach. That's the thing that people can sense in other people. Whether Now, look, some of you don't feel that way. Naturally, some of you are, you know, you're too much maybe of a driver and you're too much focused on accomplishing the goal and maybe the rest of it. That's okay. Start asking the question and start having the mindset that you're here to be of service to other people. And what's going to happen is you'll actually start to change your own you know, internal operating system. And you'll then start realizing that in the very nature of maybe starting by acting like you care about other people, you're then going to notice how they interact with you on a different, more meaningful level. And then naturally you'll start caring about other people. And then what happens is you can transcend everything. Because when you're talking to somebody and you're even reading a script, a lot of, especially if it's face to face, they can kind of, you know, feed off your vibe, whether or not you're just trying to pound through the script or just get to whatever your goal is, or whether you're sincerely interested in what they have to say. We coach you guys a lot on how to do this because again, in this world, a lot of people are, don't learn how to actually communicate at a high level, but really all it has to do with is simple rules. Don't talk excessively about yourself. Listen to what people have to say. Listen for context and listen for content and then ask questions that, you know, following up with what they just said to show that you are listening to what they just said. And then you are going to discover quickly that the very act of showing interest in what someone just had to say is going to cause you to actually have more sincere interest in what they have to say. And now you, it's, it's sort of like what comes first, right? The mindset, working on your mindset or the action. And this is something that Julie and I talk about again a lot on our show and on our book and our coaching program. A lot of th people think they have to work endlessly on their mindset. I'm working on my goal board, or to my dream boards, and my big why, and then I'm going to get to work. Well, here's the thing that a lot of you should realize. You will actually find your big why, air quotes, and all your motivation once you're actually in action. The action is what feeds the mindset. Working on your mindset and then getting into action means you most likely won't get into action. Getting into action, even if it's a little bit, you know, um, 
Yeah, what would you want to say? Even if you're manufactured, maybe in the beginning, manufactured, it's not a skills based. You're learning on the job, all the rest of it. But in the action of being in action, you then will find your mind. You're going to see yourself actually having conversations with potential buyers and sellers. You're going to see yourself actually having more meaningful, impactful conversations with people. You're going to see yourself helping people. And then all of a sudden you're going to be in alignment with your highest and truest purpose, which on this planet is being of service to other people. Absolutely. And that's where your confidence comes from too. Knowledge equals confidence. Ignorance equals fear. We've got to get into confidence by actually opening your mouth about real estate like we're talking about. So question number three, and this comes in other flavors. How many homes have you sold? This might come out in a listing presentation, conversation, lead follow-up. Maybe you're a fish out of water. Here are the different versions of this. How many homes have you sold this year? How many homes have you sold in my neighborhood? How many homes have you sold in my price range? How many luxury homes have you sold? It's all the same question. And it's worth noting that when you get questions like that, chances are that's actually a really freaking good lead. If someone's asking right. drilled down questions like that, they're probably actually looking for someone to uh, hire as their real estate professional. And I'm hoping you're getting these questions on the list side. Yeah. Otherwise, why would they care? Right? And, and here's the problem. A lot of you guys live in fear of having any of these types of questions asked of you. And that's the reason that so many of you think you have to work with buyers. And then maybe one day, one of your buyers becomes a seller and that's your fir first listing. I'll, and that's some, t you guys will buy buyer leads, join teams, do all these half steps before you actually give yourself permission to become a listing agent. You can become a listing agent from day one. When Julie and I started selling real estate, um, in our early 20s, we sold 103 homes our first year in the business, and something like 60 of those were listings. We didn't wait around for someone to tap us on the shoulder and say, it's okay for you guys now to become listing agents. And you don't have to either. You can become a listing agent urgently, but do not live in fear of having questions asked of you. Know that the questions are actually going to be asked of you occasionally and be prepared, for example. That's right. It's a good thing when you get questions. There are, again, the question is how many homes have you sold or how many certain types of homes have you sold? There's different ways of answering this professionally depending on your experience level. Now, if you're a grizzled veteran, like some of my elite clients, no sweat, they know their numbers, they have great answers, they are ready for that. But for everyone else, the newbies, the up and coming agents, agents who are out of their comfort zone, price Ag range or geographically. Agents that are leaving teams and they're wanting to you know, essentially become listing agents yes. themselves or agents that have been dominant uh, with working with buyers, and which is a lot of you, and now you're wanting to learn how to become a listing agent. Yeah, so the first thing you can do is use your company stats. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to say, we've sold or my company has sold X number of homes here in whatever the town subdivision neighborhood is. Tell me more about your real estate plan. See how we're, again, getting off of the question and getting back drilled down. Now, when someone asks you a question, especially if you feel it's being confrontational, don't, again, that's a good sign that that's actually a motivated potential client for you. Start out by saying, I'm so glad you asked. Right? I'm so glad you asked. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's a great question. And then use what Julie just said as far as the script goes. Yes, it's totally okay to use your company, your team, if you're on a team, your broker's numbers. You should know what those numbers are. So let's give them an example. If you're coming from a team and you were participating in sales last year, always use the we. We sold last year this number of homes. If you're with, say, for example, the company Julie and I are aligned with, EXP Realty, and you know from what uh, the MLS tells you how, what the uh, EXP Realty stats are in your particular marketplace, we'll use those. We, you, we sold last year. In this market, we sold this many homes. Oh, you're, you know, maybe they're asking about how many homes over $2 million have you, set, have you sold. We sold this many homes. And, and techni that's technically and legally correct anyway. Yeah, it is because you guys don't own the listings. 99% of you are agents. You are you don't have a listing. Your broker has a listing. Right. Right. You might take a listing and get the contract signed. Yes, that is your listing. But legally, that's your broker's listing. Uh, now, you can then offer to provide them the actual uh, list of homes that have been sold in the marketplace by, you know, again, using eXp uh, Realty as an example. But I'll tell you, guys will not get that question very – when you get questions like this – Again, it's a good sign that that's actually a serious uh, prospect. But I also say this, many, many times when you're getting questions like this, it's because you did not follow an organized sales approach. You mostly didn't pre-qualify. And then let's say you're getting some of these questions when you're in a listing appointment. You should never get questions like this when you're actually meeting with a seller. Maybe if it's casually and you're meeting them somewhere, but if you're actually following our organized approach, right? It's gen proactively generate the lead, it's pre-qualify the lead, send the pre-listing pack, right? It's a seven-step process. If you sent the pre-listing pack and the pre-listing pack is copywritten, it's something that Julie and I have evolved over the last forever, the pre-listing pack itself is something that is designed specifically for you to give to a seller prior to you actually meeting with them 
for the more, you know, for essentially the listing appointment that answers all of their questions. And, and uh, this, Julie and I developed this because we were going on so many listing appointments. We would go on the more expensive ones ourselves and the lesser expensive ones um, we would go on individually. But we got to the point where it's just ridiculous. I mean, we were very good at lead generating. We were, we had a great system, great team behind us. We were doing, you know, that was our lives. We'd wake up in the morning and we would uh, lead generate in the morning and then we would go on listing appointments in the afternoon. And that's just how we structured our days. Now, it got to the point where we were having to book listing appointments too far into the future. And guess what? Sellers don't like that. So we had to hire someone to go on listing appointments in addition to what we were doing. And so we hired someone named Lisa. Now, Lisa's prior, she did have a real estate license, but she actually worked at a company called Longenberger Basket. If you guys are from Central Ohio, you might remember Longenberger. And she was, yes, indeed, someone who actually wove baskets. So um, nice gal, um, you know, very personable and uh, we, she wanted to be a listing agent. We wanted her to be a listing agent for us. So we had to create a system that overcame her lack of experience and frankly, knowing what to say and how to say it. So we created the pre-listing pack and the pre-listing pack was, uh, we worked on it, took us about a year. And then obviously we've evolved it ever since covered every, so the pre-listing pack is something you give to the seller prior to the appointment and answers again, every single question that they do have and might have. Because when Lisa would then show up at the listing appointment and she'd actually meet with the seller and she was following our system, she was actually, so let's say Julie and I were taking, we pretty much took 10 out of 10 listings a week go on, but let's just say nine out of 10. Um, she was taking probably seven or eight out of 10 after maybe 90 days using the pre-listing pack mm -hmm. because the pre-listing pack was doing all the selling for her prior to her getting there. So when you're in a listing appointment, if you're getting really tough questions where you feel like you're being backed into a corner, it's because you did not do the job prior to being on the appointment. Nobody wants to be in a listing appointment and being asked questions that make you really uncomfortable where you feel you know, like you're being attacked. I mean, that's an awful situation to be in. And you're setting yourself up for that by not actually taking a professional sales approach. But here's the other thing I want you to know. And be very clear about this. The seller might like you. You might like the seller. You might have a whole bunch in common with them. You might go to the same church, mosque, or synagogue. All of these things. But they still do not want to be in an appointment with you interviewing you for the job of listing their home because they, like you, they don't like conflict. And when you send a pre-listing pack after you've pre-qualified them, you're actually, frankly, removing the elephants, multiple elephants from the room because you've answered all their tough questions. You will get the sellers saying specifically they're listing with you because of the fact that you sent the pre-listing pack and you made it so they didn't have to be confrontational or feel like they're being confrontational with you. Um, especially true if they're, you know, have a social connection or if they're even friends with you. They don't want to have to ask you these tough questions. And thank you, Bob, for actually having asked all the tough questions prior to you coming to my house um, with your pre-listing pack. You guys get it? This is the professional sales approach that we teach you in Premier Coaching. The links to join for free in the sh are in today's show description. Just scroll down or just go to premiercoaching.com. The information is right there premiercoaching.com or just scroll down and click one of the links, whether you're on YouTube or you're listening to us on any of the billions of podcast listing mm -hmm. widgets we're on. Next point, Julia, or question Next four. Next question that you'll hear is anything, I put this in as an all-encompassing thing because you guys that don't talk about real estate much and don't, you live in fear of objections, it's because you have a fear of the unknown. So question number four is anything you don't know about, insert your question here. This could be you know, Tim, I'd love to list with you, but I just, I don't understand how the whole mixed use of this property works. Or, you know, something's wrong with my septic tank. Can you help me fix it? Anything that you don't know about. It could be anything. What she's saying is when you're on a listing appointment or any kind of a, you know, meeting with a potential client, where, where we're going with this point is don't wing it. Admit when don't you BS. don't, don't BS because they can sense it. When someone's BSing you, they, their spidey senses, their intuition, and if you're meeting face to face, your probably micro expressions are going to tell them that you're probably, they might not actually say, well, it looks like Bob's trying to think of a BS answer, but they're going to feel it. They're going to sense it. And that goes into your permanent record as far as they're concerned. So this is the script. That's right. Okay. So whatever it is, insert that question that you're afraid of right there. That's a great question, Bob. I'm writing this down and I'll have an answer for you by this evening. What's the best number to reach you on tonight? Now, That's it. That here, encompasses everything. I could say to you, Tim, you know, I'd love to list with you, but I've got this troop of monkeys in the basement, and I really don't know about monkey removal. Is that something you could help me with? And you're going, what? <laughs> but you don't want to BS, so you say, you know what? 
That's, that's a great question. I'm going to write that down and get you an answer by this evening. How can I follow up with you tonight? A version of that is, that's a great question, Bob. I appreciate you asking. Always praise them for their questions. Yes. And then in addition to that, say, let me make sure I've given you the latest information on that. I'm going to do some homework on this and I'll send you, I'll call you, I'll text you, I'll email you the answer probably within the next couple hours. That way I'm giving you the best information possible. Very professional approach. You're not BSing, you're not tap dancing, you're not stymied by it. I think a lot of agents just kind of get deer in the headlights when they get something they don't know how to handle. And what that causes is you don't do your lead follow-up as fast as you should because you're living in fear of success because you're afraid you're going to be asked something you can't deal with. You don't go after listings primarily because buyers are easier for you. Buyers don't have as many objections. They're all excited about what they're getting. Listings, you know, they're more attached to the commission they're paying. They're going to put you through the grinder more. Well, we had a medical question this morning when Julie and I are walking. One of, I won't give you guys the details. It was with regards to Zoe. And so we had, we actually have a friends with all of our, you know, the local doctors. And so we texted one of the local, actually Julie WhatsApp to the local doctor yep. and asked her this particular question. She did not know the answer. She told us she did not know the answer. And she said she's going to find the answer and she's going to research it and get back to us. Which gives me a tremendous amount of respect for her, right? Because she didn't say, well, I think I've heard of that before. And yeah, come on over. I'll, I'll do that. Or for example, if maybe we'd been meeting with her in real life, right? IRL. And we were to ask her that question and she started acting because she didn't want to be, uh, her ego is telling her, whatever you do, don't, you know, don't let them know you don't know, you know, and all of a sudden, uh, maybe we sort of had some background on the answer with the actual solution to whatever the problem was. Uh, and but we know uh, from listening to her answer the question that she was kind of winging it. Do you think we're going to use her as a doctor? No way. No. You so guys you have get to have it? a professional answer. And I appreciate you zeroing in. Always compliment. That's a great question. I'm so glad you asked it. That also gives you a breath to think about what they're asking and to write down exactly what it is. And then, of course, you want to circle back and do what you promised that evening. I have to say, you yes, that's the whole point, right? You're giving yourself an opportunity. So a lot of times when you're asked a question, if, especially if you're perceiving it to be um, confrontational, your immediate reaction is almost always going to be a crappy reaction. So even if you know the answer, give yourself a break, take a breath, say, you know, Julie, I really appreciate you asking me that question. And then slow yourself down mm -hmm. and then answer the question in a calm, professional way. And again, if you don't know the answer, it's okay. Don't wing it. Say, I'm going to research it. This is, you know, I want to make sure I give you guys the best of breed information about the particular, whatever, whatever. Um, they, do not allow yourself to feel embarrassed because you don't know the answer to every question because here's what you'll discover. When you actually take that approach, when asked a question you do not know the answer to, and then you say you're going to do the homework. And by the way, yes, you have to do it, then follow up with them. Make sure you follow up with a phone call. You might actually have won yourself the business because every single other real estate professional, air quotes there, um, frankly, has been winging it or, you know, obfuscating the answer. And so that's the thing you have to take into consideration. When you take a more professional, balanced approach, you're going to discover that a lot of people have been searching for somebody just like you. And you don't experience this a lot. I don't experience it a lot amongst other real estate people because real estate people are so triggered by anything that makes them feel anxious. Attacked. And, and that, and that uh, defense mechanism, that circadian brain thing, then triggers them to even uh, go down the rabbit hole even further. And then frankly, they start making fools of themselves. Well, that's right. And I think that our discussion today on today's podcast really draws into focus this whole fear of not knowing what to say, fear of being like you're under attack. And that goes back to the expectation you have of yourself. This kind of goes back to an ego expression, ultimately, that you think you're supposed to know everything all the time about everything. Give yourself a break. Even when you start to think you know everything about real estate, some of the rules are going to change. Your MLS rules change. You know, something gets passed with your board of realtors. Stop expecting yourself to know everything about everything all the time. Expect to get questions like this and to be able to take a breath, think about it, write down exactly what they're trying to find out, and then circle back. That's okay. That's more professional than having a panic attack and then BSing. Now, there's also some higher level psychology, if you will, that's afoot here. Because if you're then saying, I don't know the answer, I'm going to do the homework, you then do the homework and you follow up, what you're creating is a, a little bit of reciprocity there, right? Mm -hmm. They know you've taken the time to do some homework. They know then you've taken the time to give them the correct factual up-to-date answer. Then you can end the question, which is a great time, a great way for us to round off today's show. Then you can end the question, oh, by the way, Bob, who do you know who's thinking about 
you know, who are the three or four people you know who's think, who are thinking about selling their home in this market that I should be helping? You have brought them something that they value, that you've proven that you're professional and you followed up with them, and now you're asking for uh, who might you help. You don't think that's going to result in you getting a positive uh, interaction with that uh, that lead who might actually do a transaction with yourself, let alone maybe refer you other people. You guys get it? This is called being professional. That's right. And I, I wanted to circle back to, we keep on going back to the same script, whom do you know who I should be helping, right? So one of the beautiful things about that, and this, this is something, you know, coaching clients realize because we go more in depth on scripts. One of the cool things about that script is if it is them, they will tell you, mm -hmm. right? Because there's always been a script floating around. Hey, Tim, when do you plan on moving? And most agents are not comfortable just blammo. When do you plan on moving, Tim? When you say, whom do you know who could use my help? Now they're willing to help you. And if it is them, they will tell you. And when they know somebody else, they're going to tell you that too. I love scripts that encompass more than one question and get to the, you know, get to conversation because that's not a yes or no answer either. And they're, and they're also politely assumptive, right? Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that they know two or three people. Mm -hmm. And until right. proven otherwise, I'm going to assume that they know two or three other that's people, right. right? So that's how these approaches work. This is a more, so what we're doing, a lot of our scripts that Julie and I have written over the last forever, they're designed to skip the question that might result in hearing no, frankly. They're designed to move the conversation forward. And I'll give you a, another little salient example. And those of you in Premier Coaching, make sure you're using the script. When you have a buyer that you know shows up in your life, uh, they're going to, you know, they're calling about 123 Elm Street. This is a for example of you know, how you should be thinking about a, having a professional approach. You know, ring, ring, hello. Hi, I'm calling about 123 Elm Street. And this is you, right? This That's a great property. A lot of folks are calling on that one. Let me check to see, make sure it's still available and find out the current status. Oh, by the way, which house in the neighborhood are you thinking about selling? And by the way, which house in the neighborhood are you thinking about selling? That then is going to get them to tell you whether they're a seller or not. Now, why does that work? Because they're waiting for you to give them the status of that home for sale. But also, the if they are a seller, and depending on the price point of what they're calling about, they probably are, right? You guys understand that? Lower end properties are probably first time buyers with nothing to sell. You know, move ups and move ups and move ups. They probably have something to sell. You're going to quickly learn that they do have a house to sell and they weren't expecting you to ask that question at the very initiation of your conversation. And that's going to cause them to be taken a little bit by surprise and they're going to miraculously tell you the truth that indeed they have a house to sell. This is all little things that you can do to make the whole process of communicating with other people enjoyable because ultimately, here's the thing, you're not tricking anybody. You're not manipulating anybody. They are calling, asking about a property for sale because maybe they're interested in buying it or maybe they're interested in using it as comparable because they're thinking that putting their house for sale. In other words, this person has a problem to solve. All you're doing is, um, frankly, applying for the job of being their problem solver. That is ultimately where all this leads back to, being of service to other people. As long as you stay in alignment with that as your highest motivation, yes, you have to focus on profit. Yes, you have to focus on making money. Yes, you have to focus on all of those things. But the way you get this uh, never-ending strength, this superpower really, is staying in alignment with your highest and truest purpose in this planet, which is being of service to other people. I'm here to help you, dear listener. Hopefully today's podcast did just that. That's right. Now, some of you might think this is coaching. This is actually just training. We're exposing you to scripts. Scripts work. There's magic in scripts. And this was just the 30,000 foot, just four different scripts for you. So if you're interested in diving deeper and polishing up, get involved in Premier Coaching. Just go to premiercoaching.com and sign up today for free. That's right. It's very simple. And thank you for keeping this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. It is our pleasure and our honor to provide this information. Remember what Julie just said, this is not coaching. This is just training. I'm thrilled that so many of you love this training. Obviously, we've had, you know, in the last reporting period, Something like 1.3 million people have, you know, listened and downloaded one of our podcasts, and that's incredible. That's just on iTunes, by the way. So that's just the podcast. That's not including YouTube and all the rest of it. Um, and now yeah, that tells me we're helping a lot of you. So thank you for the honor uh, and the privilege of allowing us to, um, you know, for you guys choosing us as your real estate coaches. Now, the next natural step is for all of you to join Premier Coaching. It doesn't cost you anything. There is no risk. Just go to premiercoaching.com. Or if you're on iTunes, just scroll down, click the link. Or if you're on you know, YouTube, scroll down, click the link. It's information is available. Very simple to join. Thank you. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow.
This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.